So our first topic is uh, kinematics. That's this week. Kinematics. Kinematics. It's actually, you're going to think, oh, kinematics. Actually, here's a quick question before we get started. And I'm not judging you. I will not uh, adjust my lectures to only teach the people who already know physics. That's usually what's wrong with the class. How many people took some kind of physics in high school? A lot of you. If you're not a hand, it's okay. I'm mostly thinking about the jokes. Okay, most of you have taken physics in high school. Okay, so Kim then you may know, is really just boring things about throwing stuff and seeing it move and describing that. Kind of boring. But it also descri describes like how planets move, how asteroids move, how basically anything moves. It even describes how coupled objects move, like my arm, my forearm, and this arm. So it's robotics, your generation, the whole robot camp thing, so that gets you excited, right? So kinematics is important to robotics, but also how the human body moves, right? So how many in here are majoring in kinesiology? A lot of you, right? So the very first thing we talk about in physics is directly relevant to why you're here. So there you go. Kinesiology is just about how the body moves. Now, we're just going to describe boring things like chalk dropping. I'm sorry, okay? Because you got to start somewhere. So I often like to have sort of simple definitions of things. So uh, kinematics, I'm going to say, is describing motion with graphs and equations, okay? These are not technical definitions. It's just basically uh, the idea of what it is or what kinematics is. Um, so we're going to do that uh, with examples of graphs and equations. Our first example of kinematics, we're going to describe the kinematics of a motionless body. All right, that's the simplest thing we can possibly describe with kinematics. Okay, the best demo of a motionless body is me on a dance floor. I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do with my arms, right? Uh, but instead, that would be a little weird. So we're going to go with this. This is a steel ball that I call Hal, and uh, Hal can move on a one-dimensional track like this, right? Back and forth, and we just got to put Hal somewhere and make it sit still, and that's it. Okay, so when you consider a problem like this, or any problem, the most important thing to do is to draw it. By the end of the semester, your drawing skills are going to increase, because you just got to draw stuff. It helps. It's like while you're thinking about it, just draw it. So let's draw Hal on the track here. Got the track. The track doesn't move, so we need these hatch marks. Is it hatch marks or hash marks? That tells me that's a solid track. That's not moving, right? And then Hal's going to sit here like this. But that might be a zero, right? So we put a little like reflection triangle on Hal. There you go. So Hal's sitting on a track. But the thing we need to do this mathematically is an axis. We're doing it with math, so we say, okay, somewhere on this track, he's along the x-axis. And we'll say the origin is over here. Right? And, you know, a real axis is probably going to have units on it, so 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters. This is the x position in centimeters. Well, that's something like that. I forgot my ruler. Let me get it. All right, you've probably seen a meter stick before. Have you ever seen a two meter stick? You probably have. Ooh, wow. It must be a top 20 school. I have a two meter stick. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to describe that with graphs and equations. Let's do graphs first, and I need a lab partner. Who has the guts? All you got to do is stand right here and be my lab. It's not hard. You won't even come back here. So somebody get down there, I need somebody standing right there. It'll be easy. While I draw this graph, some brave soul is going to stand right there. Let me start drawing this. Yes. Excellent. Okay, you're going to stand there. What's your name? Shams. Shams. And what college? Hanson. Hanson. Oh, hello, oh, Hanson. Hanson, the only place on campus where you have to wipe your feet to go outside. But uh, anyway. <laughs> let's draw this here. Um, Okay, so we're going to draw the graph, and uh, in kinematics, the x-axis is always time, okay? The y-axis is always whatever it is you're considering. In this case, me and Jen are going to do position, right? So this is plus x, and this is the origin, and there's time, okay? So how this problem is, is I'm going to say the time, and you're going to tell me where it is. So have a look at the position. At time equals zero, we'll say is now. Where is it? 110. Right there. Okay, now we're going to wait five seconds. 
Where is it now? One second. Nice. Five seconds later. Three. Okay, where is it now? One second. You do not mess with me. Okay, it's at one second. And five seconds later, at t equals 15, I'll be in drama. Now. One second. One second. Okay. Well, look at that. That's a kinematic graph. Now we're going to fit a line to it. Like that. Look at that. R squared equals 1. Should we high five? No, it's too soon. It's too soon. <laughs> Let's hear it for Shams. Very nice. Excellent lab partner. I can't believe Hansen was first. It was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's see, so this is our kinematics plot. So a kinematics graph, all it is is like the story of the motion, right? And this is the simplest one. It's just this thing basically sitting still. So if you have the line is flat on what we'll call a position time graph, that's a motionless body, all right? Um, now we'll go with equations. Let's see. All right, so the equation for this motion is simply x equals 110 centimeters. Pretty boring equation. Right? But we started with the easiest possible case of kinematics. Right? But it's possible to get mixed up even in this. It's, you could even screw this up. Right? So let me tell you the two things that are confusing even at this early stage here. Um, one is what you call the axes. So if you take a math class, you learn this is x and this is y. You're often describing space. Maybe x is always horizontal in space. Y might be positioned in the y-axis, or it might be y as a function of x. Maybe it's f and it, it's x. But if you're obsessed with your high school math class, you think of this as x, OK? You always put x on the horizontal. In physics, we put anything on any axis we want, all right? We don't care, OK? So in kinematics, when we're doing kinematics problems, we always put time on the horizontal. Time will always be here. This will always be position. Or as we move forward, maybe velocity, or maybe acceleration, or maybe jerk, or maybe the derivative of jerk, or whatever comes after acceleration, OK? This will always be time. Only in kinematics. So we'll be doing something else. But this week, this one is always time. And you might even hear me revert to my youth and accidentally say, okay, put uh, x on the y-axis. Right? Because I still think of this as y and this is x, because it's ingrained into us when we're little kids, and you can't get over it. Okay, if I say put x on the y-axis, I just mean put x on the, the vertical axis. So don't mix up your axes names. Um, and the other confusing thing is, oh yeah, so this, what is this? This is x as a function of time. X parentheses T is how you might see it in a math class. In physics, we don't write the parentheses T because it looks like X times time. It's all confusing. Okay? So how do you know it's X is a function of time? Oh, this is the hard part of doing physics problems. Context is how you know. You have to look at a problem and get things from context, not that you're always going to be told. That seems really hard, right? What context tells us that this is a function of time? We're doing kinematics. That's your context. Here's your context right here. We're doing kinematics. We study things that are a function of time. So you want to always be explicitly told everything about a problem. I'll show you another example in a minute. Um, that equals that. And usually this will be have some function of time with the uh, dependent variable in it, something times time. But for now, since we have this boring case of motionless body, it's just a constant. Okay? So be prepared to look for context. All right. Um, let's look. So I don't, I'm out of my zone here. Let's see. 25. 35 minutes is 10, okay. Okay, so now let's look, uh, let's actually uh, think about what would happen if it actually moved, right? If we're going to actually let Hal move from one position to another, here to here, or here to here, we can't just think about one position, we have to think about two positions. So that's displacement. Is a difference between two positions. Right, displacement. So if I take Hal and I put him here at, say, 40 centimeters, and he was at 40, and I move him to 60, well, like that, right? an arrow tells you where he started and where he landed, then his displacement, we call it a delta x. x is the position. This, it's x final position minus x initial position. Changes are always final minus initial. Always final minus initial. So 60 minus 40 is 20 centimeters is a displacement. That's all displacement is. Okay? It's just the change. We could go backwards, and you could guess what's going to happen if I went from uh, 
55, how was it 55? And he made it down to 40, like that, like that. There's that. All right, the displacement would be delta x equals uh, 40 minus 55 will be minus 115 centimeters. The displacement would be negative because it's going the other way. Right? So it may, it may feel like a vector. Well, we don't worry about vectors in 1D. In 1D, this week is only 1D kinematics, then positive means the, this way and negative means that way. Or you could switch it if you want. So we're not doing vector notation yet, but we are keeping up with the sign on the displacement. Okay. Now here's an example of something we're kind of skipping over is uh, distance. So in your uh, high school physics class, I may say, okay, that's displacement. But now let's think about this. What if we started at 40, and instead of going straight to 60, we went up and out and all around and passed it around. Here's how. Pass it down. It's very heavy. Oh, my God. Pass it down. I give it back to me. All right, and we go to 60. What is the displacement? 20. Oh, did I start at 60? I'm sorry, no. We started at 40, we went to 60. The displacement is still 20. Okay, so displacement doesn't care about the path. Okay, displacement does not care about path. The actual distance you traveled is important in some kinds of problems. We're actually going to skip over that. We just want to focus on displacement because that's how we get to the calculus. Okay? All right. So that's actually the first part. It had perfect timing. <laughs> Okay, what I want to say about how a, a new philosophical thing we're doing, uh, I forgot to say it at the beginning, is uh, another issue with this class is at the end, some people feel like there's stuff they were never taught, right? And just that they missed it, or maybe occasionally we did ask something that was never taught, I'm not sure. So what we're doing is each week we're coming up with a list of like uh, skills that you need to know, uh, sort of Napoleon Dynamite skills kind of a thing. Skill checklist is what we call it. So it's there is one of the links to skills checklist, and it's a poster. Look, I will make it for your dorm room if you want. Here is this week's skills checklist, and the idea is if you know how to do all these things, you're going to be fine, okay? See, this is the one that I made, and then somebody unwound it, and then I've done this before. Well, no, this is new. I've never done this before. Oh, it's upside down. So the idea is that every problem we give you, it's going to actually correspond to one of these skills you're trying to learn how to do. And you're going to know every week, what it is, what is it they want me to know how to do? It's right there. It's on the website. You can take a picture if you want. It's on the website. You'll have it every week. And what I'm going to do is, I thought of this as a defensive thing. When I read the reviews, it's like, bullshit, I told them all this stuff, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I should put up a poster in class and point to it every time. And I thought, well, that'd be kind of jerky. And I thought, well, actually, might be a really good teaching strategy, right? If, as we talked, I said, see, we're learning this now. So if you take this offensive, I really mean this is, I actually think this is a good idea, right? So we're going to have this up, and we're going to talk about these as we go. Why it also slow me down a little bit, right? Which is always good to slow down. So we've already, so I forgot to put it up because it's new and I wasn't thinking about it. But let's say we already talked about uh, 1.4 concepts and calculus of kinematics and the graphs, right? You've got to understand these position time. We did position time graphs. You saw one. We plotted one. Me and Chams did it together. Okay? Um, and that's about all we've done so far. Okay, so now we're going to keep going, and we're going to refer to the poster. We'll see how long this lasts. I try something new every year. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're stupid. Right? So this one I think will last. Though. So now we're going to move to another kind of motion called uniform motion. All right, so this is now getting a little bit more real. We take Hal, and he moves with a constant rate, like that. Okay, we're not going to try to do this with a lab partner. It happens too fast. But just visualize Hal moving along. Pretend Hal is not rolling. It's really rolling. But just pretend that it's gliding. So the first step is to draw it. Right? So here's our track. It's not going anywhere. Hal was here, and he moves here. So you can see sort of the importance of displacement. Right? Hal is constantly going through... Um, displacement. So let's start with the graph. Let's see, I think I'll put the graph, I'll cram it in here. I meant to give myself a little more room than that. Uh, I'll put the graph over here. Sneak the graph right here. In your notes, you can put it under there. So graph. We're still doing a position time graph, right? So I'm still going to put time there in seconds, we'll say. And I'm going to put position here x 
in the x position in centimeters, like that. Okay. And we're going to think about how, again, we'll do 0, 5, 10, and 15 seconds. And we'll think, where is how? So if we were doing this for real, you'd have an axis and you'd know everything. So let's imagine, though, that I started him not at 0, but at 20, and that I moved him in such a way he's moving so much per second. Now just imagine that motion, and let's make the plot. At time equals 0, it wasn't at the origin. He actually already had some displacement. He had what we call an initial position. Right? And then about five seconds later, so I would say that was 20, five seconds later, he's up to uh, 40. Right? And if it's uniform motion, that means it doesn't speed up or slow down. I forgot to define it. Moving in a straight line, not speeding up or slowing. I'll leave off that preposition there. Um, so at 20, at time equals zero, he's at 20. You wait five seconds, suddenly he's at 40. You wait five more seconds, and suddenly you find that he's at 60. All right, whoa, that's a line. And then you wait five, five more seconds, and suddenly there he is at 80. All right, so we made a line. 80 here. Right. So if you were to track Hal's motion in a uniform motion, if you were to track it with a position time plot, right, so that's what we're thinking about now, position time plot, you'd get a line. Right? It won't be flat like in the motionless case, but it would be a straight line. Okay? So what we would say about how we would describe them is we'd say how has velocity. Okay? So velocity is the ratio um, of the displacement between two times, this is kind of a long definition, between two times um, over the time difference. Over the time difference. Okay? That's what velocity means. And you can see we're showing it graphically here. This thing has velocity. So now let's do the equation, right? There's the graph, and here's the equation that we would do. And it looks like this. How many know what symbol that is? I'm worried you don't. Do they teach cursive anymore? Does anybody learn cursive anymore? A few of you learn cursive. I don't think they teach cursive. My poor 16-year-old is getting old enough he has to sign forms. And it says, print your name, and he prints his name, and it says, sign your name, and he prints his name. So it's a little bit, because they never learn cursive. And my dad never learned cursive. Look at this. Look at that. 1980. Look at that cursive. I was in fourth grade, and I wrote that beautiful cursive. Do you know why I still have this? Are you kidding me? Look at that. I was nine. I was nine. <laughs> That just wrecked my fourth grade GPA. It was just total trouble. <laughs> I never got into med school because of that. VX. Now I've got to teach this garbage. Okay, so VX. Delta X over delta T. Okay? That's exactly what the words say. It's the ratio of the displacement between two times over the time difference. So if you remember back what delta X is, the displacement, it was X uh, final mass initial. But now I'm going to get, we're going to start switching notation on you. You've got to get used to that in physics. Instead of initial and final, I'm going to put one and two, right? From time one to time two. Please put it up here, right? So x two, the final position, minus x one, the initial position. And for a time difference, you'd put the same thing. You'd say it's the t two minus t one. So what you're saying here is it's at x one at time one, and it's at x two at time two. That's all that means. Right. And you may think, oh, I've done algebra, I know what this is, or whatever. You'd say this is the slope of the xt graph. Right. That's all that is. So the velocity, there's way, several ways you can think about it. Right? It's the, the displacement over the time, or it's this slope. Equals the velocity. Right, the velocity. Right. Okay. Now, 
For a practice problem, I want you to, in your head, or on paper, that's fine too, no judgment here, or look at your neighbor, no, don't do that. See if you can figure out what the velocity of that is. Calculate it yourself. What do you think the velocity is in centimeters per second? What is the velocity in centimeters? I think I wrote neat enough that you can tell. Okay. So we do like to use audience feedback in this class. We have a lot of weird ways that we do it, okay? I don't like to bring down a poles everywhere every time it takes too long. I found a quick way to do it where nobody's embarrassed if they have the wrong answer. What I do is I count to three, and then everybody at the same time says the answer, okay? So now I get to feel everybody got it right, and you're not embarrassed for getting it wrong because nobody will hear you. Ready? So if you have your velocity in centimeters per second, I'll give you a three count, and then you say it. Ready? One, two, three. Now you don't keep counting, you're supposed to give me the answer. Wait. Oh, four. Oh, that's four. Oh, okay. Very good. I think almost everybody said four. Okay, if you didn't say four, think about why. Think about what went wrong. Okay? So we'll do those. Just get used to that. It's it's not scary. You can do it. Okay? So this is a case of how people might be unhappy with this class, where we just talked about that, and we didn't show how to do a problem. So now we're going to uh, show you where the formulas come from Jeez. that let you do a problem. These are the original 1914 boards, by the way. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay, let's see. <laughs> it makes me nervous when y'all laugh and I'm not looking. Like, I don't know what it's about. That really scares me. So now we're going to talk about how to do kinematics. How do you do the problems that you need to do? We just did some of this, right? We just had more analyzed X, VT, and AT graphs. We actually talked a little bit about the calculus of kinematics. You just don't know it yet, but you'll know it very soon. Okay, Okay. let's see. So how to do kinematics. Um, and we're going to do the case of uniform motion uh, with initial and final positions. With initial and final positions, um, x1 at t1 is the initial, and x2 at t2 is the final. Okay? So let's go back to our definition then. So I'm trying to show you that the definition is what you actually use the definition to do kinematics. So let's say our definition was that vx equals um, x2. Uh, well, shoot. Let's, let's do initial final, sorry. Initial, it'll look nicer and match your expectations. <laughs> All right, so x final minus x initial over t final minus t initial. That was just the definition of the slope, right? That's, that's all that was. Okay. So now in some problem, though, you're asked, where does it end up? You know, a train leaves Bakersfield 3 o'clock going 80 miles an hour. When does it get to Tucson or whatever? So that kind of problem you want to know, how, where, how, where, did, how, where did it end up? Or how long did it take to get there? So let's solve this for xf. x final. Oh, let's see. Um, Oh, sorry. So we're going to bring this up here, and we're going to say uh, Vx equals final time minus initial time. So all I did is bring that up here, and that equals x final minus x initial. All that's there, right? And then we're just going to bring this over here, and we're going to say x final equals, this is positive x initial, plus tf minus ti times t times v, tf minus ti times Vx. The x subscript just means we're on the x-axis. So people tend to write that in one dimension. I don't know why. Okay. Um, okay, so that, but then usually, we don't really get into, usually you say that Tf minus Ti equals delta T. We rarely write it like that. So you might say that the final position equals the initial position plus Vx delta T. And that's kind of a standard way to see it in a book, right? Maybe that seems kind of familiar. No, no, no. So I'm just showing you that that comes from the definition. It's not that we define velocity, then we have these special kinematics equations. The kinematics equations are the definition. It's the same thing. You're just rearranging stuff. Right? Also, maybe you may have seen it like this. You're thinking, okay, that's what I saw in high school, but this delta thing, I don't know what that is. So maybe ti equals zero. Then in that case, delta t, or then you could just say tf, just call it t. Right, it's just t. You have to call it time final. You assume everything started at zero, and after some time, 
where did it end up? So you could also write it xf equals xi plus vxt. There's no difference between these. This is kind of that context thing, right? If you're panicky about notation, you've got to get used to notation changing a little bit, problem to problem. All right? There's also a street name for this. Okay, the street name is xf minus xi is kind of how far it went. D, this is maybe what you've memorized, right? D equals vt. Okay, some i's lit up at d equals vt. Yes, so remember d equals vt. So d is just the difference between the, the displacement. It's sort of the high school level word for displacement, xf minus xi. Okay, so that's where those come from. And we're going to drive more of them. That's the straightforward one from the definition of velocity. When things start going different speeds, or when things speed up and slow down, it'll get more complicated. Right, so let's see. So that was a little bit of concepts and calculus of kinematics. You don't see the calculus yet, but it's coming. It's coming for you. Get ready. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to do an actual problem together. Let's do one, just to show you exactly how to use this. Right? Let's turn this down. I think I've got a problem keyed up here. There it is. So my wife's pediatrician. Uh, I don't recommend you talk to her about medicine. You can if you want. And uh, I'm kidding. She would love to talk to you about medicine. Um, so she wrote this one. Right? So you had a kid, sees a needle, and starts to run. Right? Eight meters per second. Goes down the hall three and a half seconds. How long is the hall? If you've had high school physics, you can probably do this one. So be thinking about it a little bit. And this is on our skills list. Let's see. One of our skills, I just acknowledge, is plug and chug constant acceleration. Although this is constant acceleration kinematics. This is plug and chug constant velocity kinematics. All right, this is really just d equals vt. But there's a few little things in here. If this one really stumps you, I want you to show you what's a little uh, tricky about it. Okay. So one thing is it never says velocity. It never says vx equals, right? That's context. Oh, it's running at 8 meters per second. So we know that vx equals 8 meters per second. It's also not really explicit about, well, he started at time equals 0, and he ended at time equals uh, 3.5. ti is 0. tf is 3.5. You have to figure that out. You read this and you say, oh, delta t is 3.5 seconds. It's kind of obvious in this one, I think. But in more complicated problems, it won't be so obvious. I'm trying to show you that there are contextual things you have to get. Right? So here you know that delta t is 3.5 seconds. So then you can use your complicated formula, xf minus xi equals blah, blah, or you can just go straight for the throat and do the d equals vt. All right, how far did he run? Uh, d equals 8 meters per second times 3.5 seconds. I can almost do that in my head. Let's see, a 16, 24, plus 4, 28. 28 meters. Right? Hopefully that's what you would get if you did that problem. And then you'd say, how long is the hall? 28 meters. Mm -hmm. This is dead now. Do, 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 do. Or the computer shows in fast. That's not how long the hall is. That's how far the brat ran, right? If you think about it, you got to think about the context. What's really going on here? Do we measure the length of the hall? Did I say the brat started at the end of the hallway and ran to the other end? No, that's how far he ran. Right? So you can also get context and find where you're not really sure what it's asking. So this was an ambiguous problem, technically. Although sometimes they are ambiguous and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, so that is how to do a problem. There you go. Okay. Now we're going to get into get it a little more exciting. Okay. Now we're going to let things speed up and slow down. Let's see what that's going to look like. Yeah. And now the calculus is going to show up. Here we go. So let's see. We've done stationary. We've done uniform motion. And now we're going to do uh, constant acceleration. Okay. So we're going to do, we're going to call it non uniform motion. All right? Non uniform motion. Velocity changes. And of course, the classic famous example is, that was studied in antiquity, such as. Falling. Trying to figure out why and how something falls was the major focus of science for like 2,000 years. Right? So there you go. This thing is speeding up as it goes down. How does that work? 
and how do you describe it mathematically? Okay. Another way we could show it is you can drop something. You can also just put something on a ramp, right, and just lift one half of the ramp. And then this will start with no velocity and will slowly speed up and get faster, 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 faster. That's all we're talking about now. Something is speeding up or slowing down. Okay. All right. So let's think about that. Let's imagine. So really falling is kind of fast and hard to visualize. So let's go just to our example of how here. Right, and he was here, and then he was here, and he's getting farther and farther away, right, because he's speeding up. So we have like no velocity here, and then a little velocity there, and then more velocity here. Oh, I'm doing vectors, not till next week, like that. Okay, the arrow getting longer indicates that he's speeding up. Does non uniform motion follow a straight line? Good question. This week it does. Okay, so we're only doing 1, 1D kinematics this week. So everything is in a straight line, except when I pass towel around. Okay, but yeah, you can have non-uniform motion in 2D and 3D and maybe 4D. Um, okay, now this is very important. Let's draw. Okay, so we're about to do more graphs. Let's analyze x t, but we're also going to analyze v of t now. Okay, so the graphs are about to get a little more exciting here. So graphs for this motion. Here we go. There's t. And there's x. And uh, if we think it started here and it kind of went up, and here you just have to trust me, we're not going to explain it and then drive it later, is it's kind of like a parabola. But at first it was like this, and it gets faster and faster like that. Right? That's what the position time looks like for something that is speeding up. So what we can now do, we now know enough about graphs and concepts of calculus to draw the velocity time graph. We actually can't draw it mathematically yet, but I think you'll get an idea that what I'm drawing for you is real. Let's see. So another thing about graphs is if I don't say it isn't, this is always the origin. Okay, This is always the origin 0x and 0t, 0v and 0t. I don't label it as the origin every time. Okay, okay so at the very beginning, if I want to go here, what is the velocity right there? Okay, what is it? 0. How do you know? It wasn't moving. Well, that's one reason. It wasn't moving. Also, what's the slope right here? Why did I draw it like that? Zero. Right? I very carefully drew the slope zero. You're welcome. Not everybody would have done that. But, you know, some people would have. Okay, so it's zero there. So I'll put a zero here. But then what's happening to the slope? It's growing. Ah, and you can't quite tell, and I probably didn't draw it perfect, but it's growing at a constant rate. So that, so that's supposed to be straight. Uh, a straight line is the VT graph for something in uniform what are we calling this? Non-uniform. Okay. This example with a straight line. You can have all kinds of non-uniform motion where do all kinds of crazy things. But in 1D, in this example, rolling down the, the, the hill, it's a straight line. I don't want to say it's always a straight line. Okay. Okay. So what we've got here is that Hal's velocity increases with time. Right, that's the exciting part. Now the problem, here's the problem. Um, the problem is, is that the Vx you find depends on the size of delta t. Okay? So say I told you I want to know the velocity when it's right here. Okay? You say, okay. Oh, let's just do a delta t on either side of that, there and there, and say, well, it's the slope between those two lines, and something like that. And you're like, well, no, 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 let's not do that. Let's do the slope. Let's get the delta t smaller. And if you did that, and this were drawn really well, then you would say, oh, it's actually a different slope. Right? You said, oh, maybe that's too far. Let's do these really far lines from each other. And you did them, it'd be a different slope. And you never get the same slope as you vary delta t. Right, on the delta t sides, I'll say, and on where you put it. Right? So what do you do? Right? This took 2,000 years. Humanity took 2,000 years to figure this out. Right? This was like what took so long. Is Does it have a velocity at a point in time? That's the fundamental question of antiquity. Does it have a velocity at a point, or is it, is it moving? How can it be moving if it's at a point in time? This is it. It seems not so bad now, but you know, we, don't, we have indoor plumbing and stuff. Solution is make delta t very small. 
make delta t very small. And when I say very small, I mean zero. Shrink delta t to zero um, to get instantaneous velocity. Delta t goes to zero, and that, and then it leads to, I'm running out of board, instantaneous velocity. Okay, the instantaneous velocity. So the problem is that my drawing isn't sharp enough curved here, but maybe you can visualize, and we'll show you another one in a minute. Yeah, I'll show you another one in a minute that'll, that'll make this sharper, and you'll be able to see the difference, okay? But that's the basic idea. So now we're talking about a new kind of velocity, and we're not sort of uh, stressing it as much as most classes do. If we weren't doing this accelerated kinematics, we would be obsessed with the concept of average velocity and uh, speed and instantaneous velocity. And we're sort of glossing over that a little bit, and we're just going to tie it straight to calculus and get on with our lives. Okay? But technically, when you go with a big delta t, that's the average velocity over that delta t. And when you go with a really small instantaneous delta t, that's the instantaneous velocity. Okay. 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 Let's see. Cool. Okay, so we're going to look at another case that will be more curvy, and uh, I think we'll illustrate it even better. All right. So we're still basically focused very much on this concepts and calculus of kinematics. And we're about to do more XTVT graphs because we have a new kind of motion. So step aside, Hal. And now we have this here. This is a mass on a spring, right? So if I hold it down here, let it go. Ooh, look at that. Mass on a spring. Let's draw it. Here we go. It's connected to something rigid like that. And it's got a spring. And it's got a mass like that. And it's moving up and down. There you go. There's your drawing. So now let's do our kinematics plots for that. Whoa. Well, I guess we're going to plot. What do we put on the horizontal axis? We're doing kinematics. It must be time. We're doing kinematics. Yes. What are we going to put on the vertical axis? Well, let's start with position. Can we call this way position well, x? Up x? Yes, you can. It's physics. You probably want to call it y. I don't want to push you too much on the first day. Let's call it y. Okay. So here's the origin, and here's plus y, and here's negative y. Okay. And the origin, we'll say, is the middle of the motion. All right. So the origin is kind of halfway between what looks like up and down. So all I'm going to do is draw that, and I'll say it's at zero at time equals zero. Right. So it goes up like this, and it may be a function you thought about before. Right. It's a sign. That's a position. Um, so let's think about the instantaneous velocity a little more. So this is what we defined here. We said as delta t goes to zero, we get the instantaneous velocity. We're going to talk about it a little more here. Normally we'd have a formal calculus definition, but we're just going to kind of talk about it for now. Is the slope, right, of the line tangent to x t curve. Okay? So this is a good way to look at trying to get the velocity the old way. Right? If I wanted to know what is the velocity right here, and I said, but I have to have a really big delta t. I'm not good at small delta t's. So I'll put t1 here and t2 there. Then the one I would calculate wouldn't even be close, right? It's way too much this way. Or, how about even worse, what if I put T1 here? This is T1 and this is T2, there's your slope. Totally wrong. All right. So what this idea is, is no, you don't do T1 and T2 big, you do it small, which graphically just means you draw a line tangent like that. And there's V instantaneous, which we'll just call V, we don't put instantaneous on it all the time, at that point, like that. Okay. So that's what I mean by a line tangent to the curve XT graph. If you wanted to have it here, what is its velocity here? Instantaneous velocity there is zero. No slope. You mean it actually stops at the bottom? Oh, yeah, it does. Watch it. It stopped right now. And now. It stops at the bottom before it goes back up. Okay? So that's interesting. Maybe we're actually smart enough to, um, to, uh, maybe we're smart enough to, um, 
Maybe we're smart enough to now plot the velocity, right? So we plotted the position. Now let's do another velocity graph like this. So here we are doing the graphs. Graphs are important. So let's look at this. Well, what is the velocity here? Is it positive, negative, or zero? It's positive, right? We have a positive slope there. If I drew my tangent line like that, positive slope. Okay, so it's going to start here. And by the time it gets to here, what is it? Zero. It's positive. It's decreasing towards zero uh, right there, like that. And then after this point, what is the slope now? It's negative. So the velocity is negative. This is when it's uh, going down, right, like that. Uh, like this, right? And then it had its maximum here. Its maximum slope is here, so the maximum negative velocity is here, right? The maximum negative slope there, maximum negative velocity. And by the time you get to here, the velocity is zero again. So that's when it comes back out to here. Oh, okay. And then it goes like this, right? And then it goes like that. So this is the velocity time curve. So you could draw it just by, uh, you know, looking at the slope of the top curve and copying it down. It helps to know what the answer is. It's a little bit easier. Um, so the STS velocity is the slope of the line tangent to xt uh, at a point in time. So that's what we plotted uh, here. Okay. So now when we write this, if we want to write v instantaneous, soon we'll drop the x's and the instantaneous and just call it the velocity, but we'll keep writing it there. We could say, well, it's delta x over delta t, but that's if we let t go really small, we give it a special name, dx dt. Right. So instead of deltas, we put d's. We get rid of the, the Greek stuff there and just call it a d. And this is the famous derivative. Right. This is the derivative of x with respect to t. WRT means with respect to in my world, okay? And this is calculus, oh my god. It's not integrals yet, but it is calculus, okay? So you may have heard the derivative is the slope, the derivative is the rate of change, and this is exactly why, okay? That's all it is. Instead of doing a slope with a finite delta t, we do a slope with a zero delta t, and we put d's on it instead of deltas. That's all the derivative is, okay? So now let's look at this graph we made. What function was describing the position? It's a sine, right? So this is a sine. Uh, I'm not going to write sine of t because you have to have something inside the sine. This isn't math class. We'll just say it's a sine. What function does this look like? Cosine. Right? And you may say, wait a minute. When I took calculus, the derivative of sine is cosine. There it is. The derivative of sine is cosine. If you plot sine and look at the slope and go down, it's cosine. So that means to say that all that stuff you learned in calculus about the functions and derivatives is useful? A little bit of it is. Uh, not all of it. A little bit. Some of it. So now what we're going to do is look at derivatives real quick. I think this is a good... Oh, three minutes. I'm doing three minutes. Okay, again, no judgment. We're not going to assume you know calculus. I'm just curious. How many people have had Calc 1 and seen a derivative before? Not everybody. A lot of people have. What I want to do is just lay out the derivatives that you need. I'll just do the mechanism in case you're either rusty or you've never seen this. And basically the story is, that's the concept of a derivative. We did it graphically. We did the concepts. There are just mechanical, mathematical mechanisms to calculate them for different kinds of functions. Right? So in math, uh, you'll say f of x. Right? f is the function and x is the uh, independent variable, right? In physics, we'll say x of t, and I will put the parentheses this time. x is the function, and t is the independent variable. I should say in kinematics, not necessarily in physics. When does this class end? 1040, right? Yes, okay, good. They're just anxious, okay. So uh, if you have a polynomial, x squared, maybe you know what to do. You multiply the exponent times the prefactor here. 2 times 1 is 2, and then you drop that by 1. <laughs> it's hard to talk and write math at the same time, because then you say a word and then you write it down. So 2x squared is 2 to the 2x. x cubed, 3x. 2x squared, 4x. Right, 2 times 2. And it even works out graphically. If you're really bored, 
plot yourself an x squared, and then look at its slope everywhere, and it'll be 2x, like that. It actually works. In physics, then, uh, the other ones we also need is then you're going to need sine, cosine, e to the x. Okay? And we'll use them, and there'll be problems where you have to take these derivatives. Okay? You'll get more practice at it, don't worry. Okay, I'll see you Thursday.